Here we have one of the science engineering practices we'll be referring to and using a lot in this course, and that is developing and using models. As it says here, models serve the purpose of being a tool for thinking with, making predictions, and making sense of experience. Scientists use models to represent their current understanding of a system under study to aid in the development of questions and explanations, and to communicate ideas to others. A model is a useful tool for helping predict or explain a system. Models must help to answer a question about how or why. I would definitely emphasize this in your study guide, that models must help to answer a question about how or why. Next, you're going to see a video clip that we want you to make a model to explain the behavior of the beads. Based on your video viewing, you're going to sketch an initial model to explain the behavior of the beads. One suggestion is maybe divide this into thirds, that you have the beginning position of why the beads are where they're at, explanation of during the shake, the way the beads behave, and then when the beads are coming to their final settling, and the process of settling, not necessarily a repeat of where they are at the beginning. So pause the video and generate some initial models for yourself of why the beads are behaving as they do. Remember that models will include these components. You identify the relationships. You use, connect, use connections to describe, explain, and predict. Remember overall, your model is going to try and answer why the beads are behaving the way that you observe. Here's a model that does a good job of showing what's happening. The beginning, you have the two colored beads in the middle. The beads are shaken, and you have a separation of the beads, and then they come together. This is a good start to a model to show what's happening, but this model doesn't yet show why the beads are behaving as they do. Take a moment to revisit your model and see if you need to extend your model to go beyond a sketch of what is occurring and include more of an explanation of the relationships of what is occurring. Here's a model that offers a little bit more explanation and starts to include a term you've probably thought about in looking at the beads and the way they behave in density. This model is describing the two types of liquids and the two types of beads and then going on to explain the relationship as you move from before, shaken, to a stabilized mode with the demonstration. Here's another student example of the model for why the beads behave they do. Again, establishing two different types of liquids and two different beads and how they relate to each other in density, showing the mixture of all four materials, and then a further explanation of why you will see some rise and sink, and then eventually at the end, return to the before image. Scientists don't work in isolation. Scientists collaborate and research one with another, and so what then happens is a consensus model. 
We look at all the various models that have been submitted, and the research community agrees upon a model. Here's one model of class generated. Initially, they just had the three pictures. There were no words on this model, and there was all just black dots, no distinguishing at different colors of beads. So I had asked, are these raisins suspended in air, as no liquid had been labeled as either? Hence the establishing in the draft, uh, further draft model, no raisins. Although this draft is much more detailed than the original, it shows a few more relationships to the stages of the interaction with the beads, I'm still left to wonder the why. This model doesn't get to the heart of why the behavior of the beads. It says the beads float or sink to the middle, but there's no explanation as to why this occurs. Likewise, the beads are here, but it doesn't explain as to why the white beads might be on top of the colored beads, or why they're in the middle. Here's another class consensus model. And here we see that they focus on the four various materials, two liquids and two colors or types of beads. And the model tries to explain why the beads behaved in the way that they did. Once the model has been developed, we certainly want to then use the model. The model that was developed by the consensus of the class for density was then applied in this situation where criminals steal inheritance. This is an activity that you can return to class and complete. Until then, be sure to review how to develop models and other preceding pages in your study guide that should be completed to this point.